man, after you, you know you succeed, you know what I mean? And what I tell my team is like, hey, it, it don't matter. We all being grateful for what we have. And all we can do is just play football and have fun. And then that's what our coach has been preaching us to do. It's like, hey, just go out there, have fun. And let's get this done. And we all believed. We all believed in ourselves. How annoying was it every time you go on the road? You had to talk about it. I mean, the losing skid, there's nothing you can, couldn't hide from it. It, it. it is what it is, and it was what it was. How, how annoying was it? Yeah, that gorilla gets pretty heavy. <laughs> That's for sure on the back. So it was, uh, you know, it was good to finally you know, end that end that streak of losses on the road. For the first time since South Alabama in 2012, Hawaii held an opponent scoreless for the first half. For the first time since Idaho back in 2005, UH shut out an opponent for an entire game. And for the first time since, well. The last time we strapped up last week, Mr. Everything in Green and White, Scott Harding, had a lot to do with the final outcome of the game, both on special teams and on offense. The 35 from the 15, Wolsey has got a man open deep. It's Scott Harding on the right sideline, across midfield. Scott Harding tackled near the 37-yard line. 49-yard pass play. You're moving. You're flying. Yeah, it wasn't until I got tackled, no, but anyway, yeah, it was, um, I felt good, yeah, but uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, yeah, it was, you know, that's one play, and I think, I think we went, went down and scored on that drive, but um, just one, one, phase, one phase of what I do. So Scott Hardy, back to punt, familiar rugby style, and wow, and again! Hawaii's got because it. Because of the Hawaii's rugby punt and the flight of the football, Tim Crawley, back called fair catch, could not hold on to it, and Hawaii recovers. I guess I don't really have that punting kind of mind, just because I'm, I'm not natural, I'm, I'm not really a traditional punter, and I didn't come here to punt, but I guess it's kind of because it's been so successful, you know, I've been forced to kind of realize how, how good it is and, and how valuable it is, and, um, you know, I, I, love, I love the fact that it, that it helps our team and, you know, puts our, puts our team in great field position. Um, and like I said, like, I'll do whatever it takes to help this team, and. You know, um, I guess I do amaze myself sometimes with, with the way I punt it, and <laughs> so it does feel good. Also over a string of six straight running backs hanging at least 100 yards on the UH defense. In fact, for the first time in maybe a stretch of three games, Rainbow Warriors on defense, oh yeah, they made plays. Second and goal from the three. Don't worry, he's picked off inside the end zone and doing the damage for Hawaii to midfield. What a play. Daniel Lewis, and there is a flag at the 25 yard line. Even when the play wasn't perfect, like an illegal block negating a big return on a Daniel Lewis interception, well, there were real learning moments. How mature is junior linebacker Lance Williams taking responsibility for that, holding himself accountable? Hey, everybody, you know, everybody works hard. Everybody, you know, you, you can't be blaming, you can't be pointing fingers. You cannot be, oh, coach, uh, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. But I, I knew what I did. I knew I, I blocked in the back and I gave pressure on the quarterback, but it was it was a captain mistake that I, I could have just thought of it and, I just should have just let it go. But after that mistake, I, I went I went to Coach Charles. I like, go, oh, Coach, it's my, it's, that's my fault. I blocked in the back. But he told me, just, just move on to the next play and we're going to get this W. That's how he told me. Final score, Hawaii stopping San Jose State 13-0, improving to 3-8 and eight overall. They're now 2-4 and four in the Mountain West. Spartans, they dropped to 3-7, and 2-4 and four in conference. It wasn't perfect. It doesn't have to be, really. All this team, this program needed was a win, any kind of win, and a game played anywhere, as a matter of fact. It's extra special that the W helped end some nasty skits. Are there questions to be asked and answered even after a win? Sure. Are there concerns that need immediate attention? Sure. Trust me, they will be tended to. For now, though, enjoy it. Woo! I'm Robert Kikaula. This is Norm Chow, Inside Access, here in OC Sports. Whoa!
So winning on the road, can this team not catch a break? Hawaii ends that 17-game road skid, and then today the flight back home gets turned around. An hour and a half out of San Jose, flying back to Honolulu. Mechanical, plane gets turned around. These young men won't be back home until at the earliest, 3.45 Monday morning. They can't catch a break. Welcome to Norm Chow, Inside Access here at OC Sports. So with the plane turned around, it's obvious there's no coach of the University of Hawaii football team in the state of Hawaii. So we've invited our good friend, Bobby Curran. He is the voice of the Bobby Curran Show and the voice of UH football, UH basketball on ESPN Radio 1420. I want to thank you for sitting in. Well, thanks, Robert. And it's funny that the reward for winning your first road game since 2011 is a trip home that takes longer than second, oh, it's, second grade. It's brutal. These kids can't catch a break. Now, the skid, that monkey started off a little baby, 17 games in, that's a full-blown eight gorilla King Kong. That was a lot of weight to carry around. And I think getting it off the shoulders gives me a lot of hope about the final road game, and it's the first time I can remember that a season finale for the Rainbow Warriors is going to be on the road yeah. in Fresno. So at UNLV and then Fresno State next, and it wasn't the perfect game. It was not. There were opportunities for San Jose State. There were mistakes made by Hawaii. Afterward, Coach Chow, before he took off. I bet when you watch the game film, you're going to see things that could have been way better, but the heck with it. A win's a win. They don't all have to be pretty. That's right, and, and, and both sides. You know, it's a, you, you, don't, you, 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 you don't lose the game. You win the game, and, and that's what we did. And, you know, we bought it. We, they missed a couple of field goals. We know that. They, I think I heard they double up. Yeah, it doesn't matter. All that stuff doesn't matter. The win, and especially for those young men in there, makes it all worthwhile. Hey, sometimes you go to the prom. You don't always have to go to the prom queen. A date's a date. A win's a win, isn't it? Well, getting that win was so difficult that you tend to dismiss the stats. I don't know that you'd be happy if you were to say, we're going to get doubled up almost yeah. on yardage all the time. But what you got to love is once San Jose State got in the red zone, Hawaii became Superman. And, and Hawaii's, we're not going to allow them to punt. No, we won't. San Jose State didn't punt, not once. And if you look at the numbers, you'd think the score was much different. That's where Hawaii's offense... Their output was 240 yards of total offense. That's the lowest they've done this season. Did you think that as well? Well, I did, but three out of three in the red zone again offensively. So they were totally efficient. San Jose State couldn't get anything done. And that was the difference in the game. It wasn't, as you put it earlier, it wasn't pretty all the time. But uh, I love the feeling of the W. Yeah, one quality drive with way offense. It was a 14-play drive, second longest for them this season. And it was the drive that took the most time off the clock as far as possession went 654. And this is the back end of that drive. Well, there was something about watching Joey Yosefa get back into the end zone, a place where we kind of thought he'd spend a lot of time this season. Hadn't necessarily come to fruition yet. And yeah. even we watched the one that had to be reviewed. And him, uh, him getting into the end zone yeah. wasn't easy. He barely got that across the line of scrimmage. Look at the numbers. Hawaii quarterback, Kaiko Wuzi, 9 for 16, 150 yards. He had four rushes for 15 yards. And 135 of those yards came real early against the Spartans. Joey Ilsefa, a lot of touches. The production, statistically, not that big. But what Joey did was lay down a hammer late in the game for Hawaii, and he did get that touchdown. So the guys, you know, I'm going to lay, lay it on the line for tonight, for the seniors, especially for us in the road game. We never had this feeling for so long. You know, Trace back in my freshman year, that's the last time I even won. Now I'm a senior, and it's been a while. And then, you know, seeing that clock wind down to 0-0, you know, it's one of the great feelings I ever had going out with me as a senior. Well, we knew coming into the game it was going to be a challenge. You know, they're, they're, they're a great defense, you know, they're coached by a really good guy, and, uh, you know, we knew coming in, coming into here, we're just gonna have to win the one-on-one -on -one battles on the outside. You know, the, the old line did a good job of protecting me, giving, giving me enough time to deliver the ball. And uh, the one thing we just focus on is just uh, staying, to our, staying true to our technique and just, uh, you know, running great routes. And that's what we did, you know, in the second half and also in the first half. And, uh, you know, they did a good job of uh, making plays on the ball. And, uh, you know, we like with the results we have tonight. Just give me the ball. I'm gonna eat up that clock. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to um, wind down that clock. Joey looks like a stud. Doesn't he? he? It still looks like he's yet to get back into the real Joey Ilsefa form that we've all become used to over the last four years or so. Yeah, 
But it's, it's, it's there. It's there, no question. It does seem like he's having a, to struggle a little to get his explosiveness back. But you expect that to happen when a guy's been out as long as he has. And I see some improvement from week to week, from even last week when he came back uh, to this week. And I, again, he's that guy that you can't stop him from getting a yard and a half. There's just no way. How a quarterback, Ikaiko Wuzi, the knock on him to this point, obviously was a lack of experience, a lack of real game time. And admittedly, he struggled some. But he's got the arm strength. That kid can spin it. The big knock was no touch. Got to put it softly on some of the receivers. Sometimes he puts a little too much juice into it. You can see the touch coming along here. No, there was progress in this game. There were a couple of balls he put right smack on the money. We watched the one uh, to Scott Harding, for example. That was laid right in over his shoulder. He got enough air under it. I think his issue is more with guys closer to him. If, if you're in the five to eight yard, be ready. It could hurt. Because sometimes it's coming at you. It's against the San Jose State defense ranked number one in the country. Maybe a little bit misleading, those numbers, giving up 124 yards per game. Here's Ikeka. Before catching a flight that didn't make it home on Sunday, more snaps you get, the more experience you get. You can see it clearly. You're, you're developing touch now. You got an arm. You can sling it. You can spin it. The one to Harding, nice touch. Oh yeah, uh, you know Jordan and uh, Coach uh, Coach Charles been stressing that you know you could you could throw the ball 90 miles an hour, but it's those uh, you know those big time quarterbacks that can you know throw it over the top and get into the bucket, and that's something that I've trying to be focused on you know these last couple of weeks of just taking some off on it and uh, just uh, working on touch, and that all comes down for, to uh, you know our preparation during the week. You know me and Scotty, we know we do a good job of uh, you know staying on our cues and stuff like that. And the rest of the with, with the rest of the receiving core, you know they worked uh, really hard. You know I love that group. You know, we went through a lot of adversity last week. You know, a lot of people saying this and that. But at the end of the day, you know, we just got to move forward. And, uh, you know, I'm ultimately, you know, I'm glad we had that last week because it made us better and it made us work even harder. A win is a win is a win. More Norm Chow, Inside Access on OC Sports when we come back. Dig deep, volleyball seniors. You've graduated to the 7th annual OC16 Senior Invitational. Every ILH and OYA school is offered a spot to represent on one of four teams. Watch live from Mindilani Gym, both the prelims Wednesday, November 19th at 6 p.m. on XCast Channel 1020. And then on Thursday, November 20th at 6 p.m., over to OC16 Channel 12 for the championship action. Watch it on TV or in person where ticket proceeds go to the Ronald McDonald House of Hawaii. Has anybody noticed that this kid, Austin Lopez, boy, has he slipped? Well, he started his career with 23 straight made field goals. He came into yesterday only 12 of 21 this year, 57%, which is that's the kind of percentage in field goal kicking that gets you put on the bench yeah. or they tell you someone else is kicking your scholarship. And someone else was the punter. Well, Michael Carrizoza, because he didn't get a chance to earn his scholarship punting, I guess they said we better give him a try. Hey, it was so bad they started to audition walk-ons <laughs> during one of the fan promotions. That girl came out of the stands yeah. and, and converted. So Lance Williams, you saw the arrow on him in that video. He got a hand on the second field goal attempt by Lopez. And I thought it was a horrible kick. Thank goodness for him, Lance Williams caused it, and it right. wasn't just him. And then the third one was blocked up the gut by Moses Samir. Speaking of Moses Sumil, I like how some of the young players are taking it to heart to give the seniors something to leave the program on a good note with. I, I am with you because these guys, and I think of those guys up front in particular, Moses Sumil, Bo Yap, Marcus Malapai, these guys have, uh, in the trenches, have just given you everything they have every game, win or lose. And, and I'm happy to see that even freshmen and sophomores are getting that there's a debt here owed to the guys that came before. Hopefully, they'll allow those seniors to go out with a win at Aloha Stadium on Saturday. Only two games left in the regular season for Hawaii. Even the coach is in on win for the seniors. I know you take the seniors to heart. I know you do. To see their reaction, to see their faces, that had to just, like, the best feeling ever. We graduate 20 seniors. 16 of them graduate in December. Three of them will graduate in the spring, and one is in graduate school. And that makes me as proud as well. I, I looked at that, and I said, these young men will go on. Two of them already have jobs. And so it's, it's just fun to see these guys. And, and you, But we know we have a lot of work to do. Like you said, I don't know what the numbers are like, but it really doesn't matter. These kids deserve it, and I'm glad, glad to see their faces and the, and the happiness that they have. 
And the one thing, that, the first thing I thought of when I, you know, I seen that clock keep zeros was just the seniors, you know, knowing that the last time they won was when they were red shirts, you know, and they weren't even playing, you know, they didn't really contribute to that win. So it just meant a lot, you know, to just get that, you know, that weight off our shoulders. Now, we talked about defense. We, we've seen Scott Harding on, on special teams and we've seen guys make plays. And you probably don't notice this until after the game, maybe the day after. In the heat of the moment, it, it didn't hit me. Hawaii only had one possession offensively in the third quarter. And a third quarter total offense, oh. minus five yards. That alone doesn't say 13-0 win. No, it doesn't. And in fact, the fa the Hawaii not getting or losing any of its advantage, its 10 nothing advantage, in a quarter in which they had negative yardage, might be the single most remarkable stat from the game. Now, defensively, there was four series away forced San Jose State to go three and out. And on defense, along the way, there were plays made, not in the middle of the field, not on the back side of the field. Sometimes San Jose State went deep into Hawaii territory. Well, they were so efficient outside the red zone or even outside the 25-yard line. We'll extend the red zone five yards to really make it pay off for Hawaii because their numbers were terrific on third down conversions. But when it got nitty-gritty time, when it got inside the 25, that's when we saw the best of Hawaii's defense. So it's the red zone stop, seven trips inside the 25-yard line for San Jose State, five trips into the red zone, that's 20 and in, and no points to show for it on the scoreboard and their quarterback Joe Gray late in the game gave his team chances they, they couldn't come down with it speaking of Gray his numbers 25 of 45 305 yards the one interception he was sacked three times rushed for 38 yards his top target Tyler Winston 10 receptions but the outcome is just 86 yards but the tale of two Tylers I love Winston I love Tyler Irvin now as, as we look ahead to even much more video, fourth down, oh. alone, why came up big? Well, it was it was those kinds of plays, and then you saw that uh, we saw people, even people we didn't expect. We saw the, the usual suspects. We saw Nico Uti with a terrific play defensively it was one of those games when a big play had to be made somebody from Hawaii stepped up and and made that stick yeah on that incident that was Daniel Lewis mm -hmm. who gets to play because the injury to Ted Stevenson as safety and you're a coach you gotta love a kid stepping up to make a play well and I thought it was absolutely terrific even though I unfortunately misidentified him at the time <laughs> <laughs> couldn't read that number from the side uh, but he was terrific and and it would have been a heck of a return had you not had the unfortunate block in the back. Spartans did not punt. They had 462 yards of total offense to just 240 for Hawaii, 157 yards rushing, 305 yards passing. But at the end of the day, when the game was on the line, you've got to give credit to Hawaii defense when on fourth down, and we talk about it again, we've seen them make big plays, but on fourth down, you make a play. And it was on Tyler Irvin, who yeah. you could make a case might have been, it was one of the Tylers as their best player, might have been Irvin. And uh, Hawaii just said did. They made the plays when they absolutely needed to. And that was, I think that's the story of this game. Yeah, TJ Taimatu Ia was in on both the fourth down plays. Luke Shawley on the bottom of that pile as well. And oh yeah. You can do that. Your defense makes plays. DJ's numbers, 11 tackles for Hawaii, five of them solo, one for a tackle for loss. Again, the team leader in tackles. Taz Stevenson was out. Bo Yap. Is, is it me, or does the fourth quarter just belong to Bo Yap in football well, games? Well, Bo Yap has the motor, and sometimes it doesn't pay off as much, or you don't see it as noticeably in the first couple quarters. But get into quarter number four when people start to flag. That's when his intensity, when what everybody calls high motor characteristic, pays off. I mean, he's made some huge, huge plays uh, in fourth quarters all season long. I want to ask you one more question before we let you go. The win on the road to get the gorilla off their back. There's two more seasons left, and two more games left in the seasons. Ugh. Are you expecting wins? Should we be expecting wins against UNLV and at Fresno State? Uh, I kind of think that they're related because UNLV, to me, will be a predictor on Fresno State. Get it together. If, that's, if Hawaii could have, let's, can we, dare we say, a streak <laughs> if they win against UNLV at the stadium, I think guys would be feeling really good about that 
heading off to Fresno for a season finale. Important that they keep the momentum that they got in San Jose. Admittedly, when the schedule came out and you started looking, okay, W, L, W, it was big W with UNLV, and then it all changed when UNLV beat Fresno. Yes. Although, what we now know is Fresno at it's times this year hasn't been Fresno. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I want to thank Bobby Curran from ESPN Radio for stopping in because it's not good to be part of the U.S. football team on Sundays. <laughs> it's, it's an ugly return home for them. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Norm Chow, Inside Access on OC Sports continues after this. We'll welcome in. One more streak to talk about. Can you win two in a row on the road? Well, we got one at home, <laughs> right? We got one at home. We'll then take care of that business first. I tried to get him to commit. Welcome back to Norm Chow. Inside Access here on OC Sports. We welcome the star advertiser, Stephen Sutt, host of the Warrior Beat on Hawaii World 808 2014. What is it called? I believe it's HawaiiWarriorWorld.com and then a bunch of things. You got to find things. But there, there are a lot of great things in there. Sydney Lewis, Dave Reardon, plug them all. It's so shameless. It's painful. Seriously. <laughs> okay, overnight development. The way things played out, a way beating San Jose State, Air Force, and overtime knocking off Nevada, there is a possibility. I mean, it's a long shot, but there is a possibility. Hawaii could win the West Division and get to the Mountain West Conference title game. Right, right. or wrong? You're right. And it, all Hawaii has to do is win out. Um, San Diego State has to lose out. Nevada has to lose out. And I believe Fresno, part of that win out, lose out deal, has to beat Nevada this week, lose to Hawaii. Ways in. As simple as that. Now, here, here's the standings in the West Division of the Mountain West Conference. On top of it, Nevada, San Diego State, Fresno State all have three losses, three and three. There's Hawaii at two and four. Left on the Rainbow Warriors schedule is UNLV at home this week on the road season ender Thanksgiving week at Fresno State. Now, who does Nevada and everybody else have? Well, San Diego State they, uh, has to play uh, Air Force and then they play San Jose State. And then uh, Nevada plays Fresno State and then UNLV. So, Fresno State's kind of the key in there because Fresno State's got to knock off Nevada for, to set things up. But again, this has happened before. 1992, Hawaii won its first um, WAC, a shared WAC title when after it got blown out by San Diego State, it ended up getting into a three-way tie and then going to the Holly Bowl. Going to the Holly Bowl to defeat Illinois in San Diego. That's pretty good stuff. I want to talk about the losing streak of one particular UH football player. But after we hear from Hawaii's Lance Williams. A couple weeks ago, you said we as players need to ask ourselves, do we like football or do we love football? Can these kids now, this team, start to love the game again? Hey, it's the feeling right now. Everybody feels good. You know, W feels good. Everybody loves the game all of a sudden. But we got to keep that consistency as we go. You know, we cannot be, we cannot give, we cannot just like, like, like the game and then become loving and then like it again, you know what I mean? So we just got to be consistent in what we do, you know, be, be consistent in what we believe in, be consistent in our coaches and what we do every day in our lives. And then we, you know, other, then things will fall in pieces and we're all going to love the game. I love the way he's, he gets deep when, he, when yes. he speaks. And you want to talk about a, a road losing streak? His last road victory? It was at a low stadium when he was a senior in uh, Farrington High School. Really? You did, you did the math on Lance Williams. Well, I asked him to. <laughs> <laughs> so his last road win was the Loa Stadium. Yes. Wow. Well, and that's quite a that's quite a tra you know deal. I mean, you got to go take the H1, and we've been on the H1 today. That's not easy. Oh, trip. H1 on Sunday, Westbound is absolutely brutal. We got much more on Norm Chow Inside Access as we go to break. Though, let us first show you this week's Super Cuts cuts that rock. We're talking about Hawaii defensive back, Naquan Phillips, making hit after hit against the Spartans of San Jose State. And coming up after this timeout in this week's Size Matters segment, Steven Sai checks out the career of Naquan Phillips, Mr. Honolulu. Welcome back to Norm Chow, Inside Access here in OC Sports. A couple of weeks back, on NCIA, we went all MTV. Yes, we did. With Cody Alfasita, crib version. Yes, we did. And now everybody wants to show us where they live. I know, it's, it's great. It's like an open house day or something. It, and, and that was sort of an impromptu thing. We were up on campus and well, Naquan Phillips said, hey, do my house. So I said, sure. So size matters this week. 
Stephen Tsai visits a place. There's five of them? Five of them. Five teammates live in the same place. Downtown. Welcome OC Sports to the crib. This is where it all goes down, the Magic Kingdom. As you can see, we're up here in the living room. This is where we come on Sundays and Saturdays and watch college football on the big 70 inch right there, as you can see. Right here, we got the big $100 bill on the wall, you feel me? Because at the end of the day, it's all about the money in this house, you feel me? We got to get to it and keep grinding. This is my homie right here, D-Magic. Barry Hagelin, he from the crib too. He from Florida, my dog got them goals in, you feel me? That's how we rock down south, though. We stay at the goals, though. Five, four, a lot of there to be exact. Moving on to the kitchen. This is the stove where my roommate, Morel Jackson and Damian Packer, throws down. Anything you name, they will cook it. Welcome to my room. It's pretty basic, nothing here real major. But this is where it goes down right here. All the sleeping that I need from a hard day at work or a game, this is where it goes down. This chair right here, I basically call the gamer chair. TV stays on sports, because it's all about sports in my life. This is my personal bathroom right here. As you can see, it's pretty clean for a guy. Most people think guys have dirty bathrooms. D-Magic, straight from OC Sports, you know what I'm saying? In the crib, the kingdom, you know what I'm saying? I'm in my room, I have the smallest room because I came last, but it's whatever. I guess this wasn't even supposed to be a room. I don't know what they, they made it, but I mean, if I ever want to get out and I don't want them to know I'm gone, I'll just slide out of here, you know what I'm saying? I got a customized hockey jersey. Cuddy Magic, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a tribute to my dog Willis. He used to call me Cuddy Magic, you know what I'm saying? So I got so I got this for him. I'm going on the road, and I got to have a shoe. Well, I just got these, so I'm going to probably bring these, because you can't go wrong with all white. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter where we go. Like, after the road, like, once we get this road win, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have we gonna have fun after, and I'm, I'm going to slip out on these all whites, so you're going to see me. Yeah, it's my room right here. The only receiver, only receiver in the house. You know, I gotta keep it clean because the DBs keep me on my toes about keeping my room clean. But you know, Morel, Morel the handyman, he got our TV on the wall. We all got AC, so you know we we sleeping good. Sleep is sleep is important for us. You know, I got closet clean. You know, bag ready to travel. Well, like a good haircut is, is rare out here, so I gotta have the hats. You know, usually match matching my clothes pretty good, so. You gotta, you gotta hide the hide the bad hair when you got a bad hair day, so you still on a hat and you're good. And as you can see, we're working on to the last person room in this house, Morel Jackson, aka Bob the Builder, because anything you got, he can fix it. And he's also one of the top chefs in Hawaii. I guess I got the best room in the house. Take a look around, got all the pictures, got my baby on the wall. Got one of the best men's ever on the wall right here. And that's pretty much you, man. Pretty much for me right there. AC gotta stay on 60, cause you know where I grew up at. I grew up having no AC really like that. So I gotta take advantage of everything I got. Oh, and he has the lion in his room to represent me. <laughs> the man of the house, you feel me? Got the lion tatted on the chest, you can see. That just represents us. We're strong individuals with a lot of power and all that, you did. Hey, thanks for coming to our crib. It's Naquan, D-Magic. Oh, I came in this club with you, girl. I don't know why I came in with these diamonds on my chain. Surrounded by my Too bad they're so shy, isn't it? No kidding. <laughs> so the way things play out, there's house rules. Yeah. What are the house rules in that household? Well, they're about two, we can say, on the family show, and then the others. But they, they basically have rules. And if you break a rule, you got to buy hot Cheetos. Like. Not fiery, not regular, puffy, and just so hot. We always have hot, hot Cheetos. Cheetos, so that means three people would really? be wrong. Somehow. So they got their own stock of hot Cheetos because somebody obviously broke the rules already. Yes. That's like bear crawls in practice. Apparently, I broke the rules. Did you? So you're stealing food from these young individuals. Well, they are. to make it in life. And it's hot. Are they really hot? They are hot. I've never tried hot Cheetos. I, I, was, I was bleeding from the eyes. <laughs> it's never good when you're bleeding from your eyes. We got more come up with Norm Chow Inside Access here on OC Sports after this time out. Welcome back to Norm Chow Inside Access here on OC Sports. Again, Hawaii stopping San Jose State on the road 13-0 ending that 17-game road skin. Here's the final statistic. Rushing yards, big in favor of the Spartans, 157 to 90. 
San Jose State out threw Hawaii 305 yards to 150. Third down conversions, 5 for 15. For UH, 12 of 19 for San Jose State. And a big difference was in the red zone. Hawaii, 3 for 3. Look at San Jose State. 0 for 5 in the red zone. One player in particular who was back in action for only a couple weeks now, he got shaken up a little bit again, was Devito Latai Moore at inside linebacker. He got hurt. It looked like he pulled up just lame and was non-contact. Right. He, I believe he uh, pulled his hamstring. That's what he said afterwards when he said, ouch, I pulled my hamstring. <laughs> it, it didn't look as bad in the play, but what looked worse was they almost snapped the play well, he was on the ground in pain 30 yards the other way. I know. That's kind of an interesting thing that nobody notices that guy. And they, they always say that he does things that people don't notice. But the fact that they didn't notice that he was on the field still, that, that was kind of incredible. But, hey, that would have worked and would have been a major offsides penalty. Yeah, but. major. But I, I think back to the game. And, and maybe, maybe it's a good thing looking forward. Maybe it's a good thing looking in the present right now. You take away the effort of Scott Harding again. He had a 49-yard reception. It unbelievable punting the football. Maybe the play that screen pass to Joey Iosefa could be the play that ignites this football team, offensively anyway. Right, and, and that was a really good type of screen because a lot of times, sometimes they'll send him out there. Alone. But they actually set up very nicely and everything. He wasn't exposed to everything, gave him enough block and everything, and he, he really took off. And after the game, Joey said one thing, give me the ball. And again, Hawaii tries to show some trickery. Woozy dumps it to Joey Iosefa, who gets to midfield. That's the number seven Hawaii fans are very familiar with. That one-hand catch <laughs> on the screen. That answered all the questions. Is Joey healthy? Can Joey go? Is he back? You're back, aren't you? Yeah, I'm back. You know, I'm excited. You know, last week with Rusty, this week, you know, feel a lot more comf um, confident coming in the game. You know, that, that catch, you know, I got to try to do what it takes, you know, get, catch that ball and then get some yards. It's good to see the enthusiastic smile. It's infectious yeah. of what Joey Yusefa brings to this football team. It's two games left in his college football career. Can he help this team do some damage? I think so, and he did that last year. I mean, he missed a lot of games because of the injuries, came back, had a big thing, and maybe maybe Joey just needs to rest a little bit during the middle of the season, but his presence is just a big thing. He doesn't have to get a lot of yards, but the idea that when he gets the ball, he can do a lot of things, he takes a lot of pressure off the other players. Do you know the way to San Jose? Do you know the rest of those lyrics to the song? Well, I don't know, but I think Hawaiian Airlines has a new version where, <laughs> it's, where? It's, you, if you didn't get the first time, you got to try it the second time. We, we may not know the lyrics, but we do know that if you do love San Jose, mm -hmm. you might have to stay there an extra night. That's how tough it is. These kids, this football team, this program just cannot catch a break. Again, no coaches on the coaches show this week because the flag got turned back. Thankfully for them, nobody hurt, nobody shaking up, no nothing. An hour and a half into their flight from San Jose to Hawaii, the football team in its entirety gets stranded. They're not going to get home to like 3, 4 o'clock Monday morning. You would have gone, though. If you were the pilot, you would have just taken a chance, weren't you? No, I'm saying, saying hey, if the dipstick is broken, turn the plane around and check the oil. Something's wrong. Well, things, good things can happen. I've seen loss. Things, things can happen when, you know, can go down. But, you know, I, I think they were there enough. I could have, they could have gotten the rest of the way. In, in the absence of head coach Norm Chow and any one of his assistants, the show must go on. I want to thank Stephen Tsai from the Star Advertiser. I want to thank Bobby Curry from ESPN Radio. I want to thank our entire crew here at OC Sports for watching Norm Chow. Inside Access, I'm Robert Kekola. Good night. Norm Chow Inside Access has been sponsored by Bank of Hawaii, Chevron, and Hawaii Honda dealers.